Hello everybody, it's Tori, and welcome back to another episode of the Dorm Debrief Podcast. What is up you guys? Um, so I'm finally back after probably about a month and a half. Um, but you know we're just going to be debriefing everything in today's episode and not really talking about too much about me but i feel like it has a lot of significance between the period of life everyone's going through right now so today we're going to be talking about when god says no so honestly with this episode i'm really going to cut right to the chase because we have a lot to talk about um and honestly i miss youtube i miss filming like everybody who watches me and like knows who I am personally knows I just I have a passion for this and I love being behind the camera I like doing the editing and the aesthetic things and it feels so good to finally be behind the camera again like y'all this semester especially you know as a college student has hit so hard I don't know what it is about second semester but I mean this is only my first semester right well well (laughs) first second semester um but I don't know what about it is, but it just hit so hard out of nowhere. I came in from winter break thinking, oh, you know, we got this new major, new year, everything's going to be cool. Yeah, right. So, you know, everything is kind of moving steady so far. Um, We're going to debrief everything. But I feel like the whole topic of God says no is not only relevant in my life, but in the lives of so many people right now, it's like, I feel like everyone's going through this universal shift right now. Maybe it's the spring season. I don't know what it is, but we're going to talk about it. Okay. So to start, where have I been? Whew, deep breaths. So, you know, like I was saying in the previous clip, I came into spring semester really prepared, really ready. And this obviously like, yes, it's my first time, you know, having my second semester as a freshman. Um, But at the same time, I think I bit off more than I could chew. And what I mean by that is like, I I had y'all, I mean, I still have 18 credits now. I'm dropping a course, so I'll have 15, so I'm gonna be okay. But I was taking 18 credits. I started my podcast, right? I was trying to do YouTube and social media. I was exec board on a social media club, designing the graphics, right? Um, I had Bible study. I was going to church every Sunday. I had still need time for a social life. I work every Friday, five, six hours. Like I was doing so much and mind you, like that's not even all of it. Like I had probably two other things that I can't think of off the top of my head. And you know, it just got too much. And it really, guys, it got to the point where I was like thinking about dropping out. Like it was, (laughs) it was serious. And, you know, I'm still in the process of considering certain things, but at the same time, it was just like I had way too much on my plate and I was just drowning in things that I couldn't handle. Now, mind you, you know, doesn't mean that I'm behind the camera now and I'm talking to you and I, you know, look all cute and my room's clean and all these things. I'm finally posting on YouTube again that everything's all good. And I'm not a big content creator yet as much as I want to be like this is you this is just beginning (laughs) y'all but it doesn't matter because everything you see online I promise you it's fake are these bracelets getting annoying I feel like you guys are gonna get annoyed by the clanking of my bracelets but anyways I feel like everything is so overstimulated online and like y'all have been new that I want to be real and genuine but this is like I I'm still going through it but I'm coming out of it but I've been going through the knit in the grit, y'all. Like the knit in the grit of life, of school, of everything, relationships. And it's it's up to me to be fully transparent because I want people to look years down the line at these videos and be like, damn, she really started being genuine. She really started from being genuine and that still hasn't changed. Never will I let the fame, the numbers, anything change the genuine side that I bring to any platform that I'm on. Now. With that, you're like, Tori, why are you talking about this? Nobody cares about what you went through. Like, don't give us a sob story. And I promise y'all, I'm not giving y'all a sob story. I'm giving you reality. 
right? And it's just not only me being fully transparent, but telling y'all what I learned throughout this whole process that I'm still currently going through. And what I learned is like I said in the beginning, the whole topic of this episode is that God will say no and you gotta know how to respond to it. And you might be thinking, Tori, that's kind of general of you to say, what do you mean when God says no? I'm gonna tell y'all exactly what I mean when God says no. And some of y'all watching this, like I, like I said, I don't know how many views this is gonna get. I don't really care how many views it gets it's whoa <laughs> it's gonna get it's not about the numbers it's about who i reach right you know when god says no it means like he's literally saying no to something and you are battling it within your head right and we often hear the quote or just the phrase saying that you know our god is not a god of confusion right and that is something i feel like as humans we constantly struggle with because we want to figure things out on our own i know for me I'm a control freak, I can't lie. When I feel out of control of something, when something isn't tangible to me within my mind, when I can't put a label on it, when I can't grab my hands on it, I, I get anxious, I, I feel like my world's falling apart and it just shows that I'm human and I come at fault when it comes to believing in God at times, when it, specifically when it comes to that. And I feel like it's not only me, but a lot of us do. And that ultimately can make it really, really hard to trust God's word, specifically when he says no to certain things. Now, I could really like exploit myself and like, you know, blot out all my personal business, but I'm not. I'm just going to give you all little snippets. Um, but, you know, I want to give you guys some of my personal examples of what I mean when God says no. And, you know, this is crazy. I don't mean to go off topic. It's not off topic, but when I'm talking about God and everything, you know, I started this podcast thinking that this was going to be like an all-inclusive podcast. And I, I still want it to be. But during my time away, I really realized that low-key, I should make this kind of more of a faith-based podcast, not a Catholic podcast, not a Christian podcast, not a religious podcast, a faith-based podcast. And I don't know if y'all know Emmy Moore, but she is literally my inspiration. I mean, I can't replicate everything that she does, but the way that she talks about God in her podcast is something that I want to replicate to everyone and replicate within myself when I'm talking to an audience. Um, you guys might be able to see more of me posting, you know, godly or Jesus-y content. Um, but just know, like, you know, it's coming from a place of love and it's not really you know weird or it's not like trying to push anyone to a certain faith but you know i promise y'all like i said that rough time i've been going through the only thing that's been keeping me going the only thing that gave me discernment the only thing that gave me peace of mind bro is god and so how could i not talk about him how could i not honor him and the glory and the blessings that he's laid down on my life you know? <laughs> all right anyways i be getting off topic sometimes um but when it comes to examples of when God has said no in my life, going through this season, this changing period that I've been through is number one, <laughs> yikes, like I don't even mean to talk like I said about my personal life too much, but the biggest one for me was definitely getting into a relationship. And what I mean by that is personally for me, um, you know, I was having a really rough time with my classes, keeping up with everything. Um, you know, I was doing so much. I automatically felt overstimulated every day. I wasn't sleeping, I wasn't eating right. And then on top of that, I met what seemed like a perfect man, you know what I'm saying? And obviously no one's perfect, but you know, I had met this guy and you know, in my eyes, he was just like, wow, you know, like this is everything I would want in a person, da 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 da. And like, don't think this is gonna take a dark turn because it's not, it's, it's a good story. Um, doesn't have a bad ending but it doesn't matter how much I ended up liking him how much he liked me whether he was a man or God or not whether he bought me flowers like, it didn't matter all of that stuff it didn't like it doesn't matter all of those not even superficial things but even the deep things the deep conversations because if it's not if, it, if God doesn't want it guys it's not going to work this is really a prime example of it because it didn't matter like how much I wanted to there was just something in me like holding me back I met this guy like being in toxic relationships my whole life you know I, I had never been able to experience someone who was just so pure and so genuine so it brought out a side in me 
that I didn't know that needed to be addressed. It brought out trauma from my past relationships and habits that are a result of my trauma from past relationships that I didn't even know existed. Which going through everything that I was going through, you can imagine brought up a lot of emotions, a lot of fear, a lot of like not feeling in control. You know, what I'm trying to get at is that we, we kind of went back and forth with everything. And like I said, this is not supposed to be me sharing my personal business out here. Um, but I feel like this is just an active representation. Like it was so clear. Like it's one of the clearest signs I've ever got from God in my life. During this time I was seeing this guy, I was praying to God every single day, y'all. Like literally every single day. I could not let my mind rest until I got the answer from God. You know what I'm saying? For Am I at fault for that because I wasn't putting enough to trust in God? Yes. But you know, like I said, I'm human. So you know, one of the things that I realized, like I said, is like, you know, it's not a God of confusion. So we had a lot of back and forth at first, you know, I wasn't ready and then we were kind of in this weird stage and like where we were like talking, but we weren't talking, but we were flirting with each other. And then it was like, okay, what are we? And then I was like, you know, I want a relationship and I was like, okay, cool. And then we good. And then, you know, all of a sudden now on his side, first it was me, then it was him saying, you know, honestly, I don't think I'm ready for a relationship. Through all of that, I'm not mad. I'm not mad because, you know, do I still think that that man is everything that I want in a person? Yes, I do. But that doesn't mean that I have to have him right now. Or doesn't mean I have to have specifically him. Just because he's a good guy doesn't mean that number one, he's sent from God. And number two, that he's the person for you. And I'm not saying that he's not the person for me or he's not sent from God. But what I'm saying is that you don't have to feel so obligated to act on something just because it's right in front of you. Like I said, let God handle it. Because God will tell you if it's for you or if it's not, or if he wants you to wait or if he wants you to go. Like he'll tell you, but you have to listen. And so you guys, throughout that whole process, what I eventually came to within my mental was that I need to stop asking God and going to God and asking him, God, show me this, God, show me that, and just sit down and listen. Because I was pushing away things, I was ignoring things, no, 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 like, like that's, that's, not, that's not real, like, you know, that can't be true, you know, God's not trying to tell me that, he's trying to tell me this, right? So I was kind of warping it to what I wanted to believe and not what, what God was saying because it's not a woman thing, yeah, <laughs> it's not a woman thing, it's an everybody thing. That people as humans, we have this intuition. And a lot of the times, a lot of times people mistake intuition for it just being our subconscious. But a lot of the times our intuition, intuition? <laughs> y'all, what is going on today? This is how y'all know I haven't been behind the camera in a minute. But anyways, intuition is actually God trying to tell us something. Sometimes it's not us, it's God. So... I was kind of warping it to what I wanted to believe and eventually I came to this consensus that like I was addressing things in my head and I was able to actually sit down and think about well are these thoughts I'm thinking about for a reason and what is that reason why am I thinking these things and I eventually came to the conclusion that God was trying to tell me that it was a no <laughs> like it was point blank simple no right and when I say no no from God isn't always a bad thing because in my experience with this specific situation now we're going to talk about other situations but in this specific situation he was saying no wait you need to wait because I done showed you you, you praying for a man of God ladies we always sit up here God please send me a fine tall six foot he gotta have money he gotta read the Bible he gotta do this he gotta do that he gotta do you know what I'm saying <laughs> We always praying for a very specific thing we got. God, please send me my man. I'm tired of being alone. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of that. But it's like, if God sends you the man that you pray for, are you going to be ready for him? And a lot of us, <laughs> the answer was, for me, the answer was no. And I didn't realize that until I met that person. You know what I'm saying? And it didn't even matter whether if that's the guy for me or not. But a man who possesses those certain qualities, I said, oh, shoot, like... I gotta level up because I thought I was sitting pretty. I thought I was the catch, but I'm like. <laughs> so by me listening to God say no, 
I was able to recognize these things that I wasn't recognizing before because I was too worried about uh, why doesn't this work out? God, why do I feel this way? God, is this the person for me? Da 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 da. He was like, child, you just need to shut up and listen. Um, but you know, not only did I come to consent, the consent, whoa. Anyways, but not only did I come to the consensus that, you know, I needed stuff to work on if I'm, if I want a man like that, if I want him specifically, if I want any man who has the qualities that he wants, but also I realized that it wasn't the right time. Sometimes, you guys, God will give you something, but he won't give it to you fully. Y'all ever heard of like the carrot and, I think it's the carrot and stick thing, the analogy where it's like you got the bunny and then the person has a carrot on the on the reel or the hook or something and he's reeling it in the bunny's constantly chasing after it sometimes god will do that to you he'll give you something he says up oh, i'm gonna show you what you got i'm gonna show you what you could have but then i'm gonna take it away because sometimes for me i needed a humbling moment from god where he was like child you got stuff to work on you keep praying me to do this to do that but you not understanding what I'm asking you to do. So for me, it was like, you know, I was able to recognize, dang, like, I really have stuff to work on. And he, God gave me everything, but I realized I wasn't even ready for it. So at the end of the day, you guys, it, it, it was all in me understanding that God said no to open so many new doors within my mental for me to explore and for me to address, right? Just because, like I said, because I know a lot of us, we get anxious, but like, like I said, just because he says no on something doesn't mean that it's a no forever. Because I promise you with anything, relationships, school, anything it is, if it's going to be, if it's in God's plan, it's going to happen, right? Is what, is what, wait, wait, let me, wait, wait, <laughs> let me, wait, wait, as long as you let it, because if it's in God's plan, it's going to happen inevitably right only if you let it because we have and we live in a world of temptation of sin of lust right and so if you are letting those other things distract you from God you are not going to be able to fill all the things that he wants you to fulfill in his name right um but that was the thing that I had to learn I was I was coming from a very worldly mindset I was I, was, I wasn't thinking as if God had plans for me. I wasn't thinking as if God already got me. I was praying for things God said, you already have it. Like stop tripping and just do what you need to do. Don't let all these other things distract you. Like the maladaptive daydreaming, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. Maladaptive, mal, some, you know what I'm talking about. The daydreaming. Don't let the daydreaming, <laughs> let me slow down. <laughs> Don't let the daydreaming distract you. Don't let the lust distract you. Don't let the parties, don't let the schoolwork stress you out. Like, don't let any of that distract you from what God has planned for you. Because I promise you, if it's from God, it will work out. So, now that was the big thing, right? But the other things that God was saying no to in my life were my extracurriculars. Things that were taking up too much of His time. And I'm going to emphasize His time. Because when God's at work... He works very, very quietly, and sometimes we can't notice it if, like I said, we have too many worldly things around us. We really got to get in the presence of God to understand, oh, whoa, this is what he's trying to show me. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it was, you know, I, I was in a social media club. I happened to be on the exec board. Honestly, to be honest, I don't even know how I got there. I just was on exec, and I loved it, and amazing people, um, great club. But it came to a point where I was I was so at a low, you guys, that something had to go. I didn't care what it was, something had to go. And I love everything that I do, besides my job, but that's a love-hate relationship. I mean, I feel like nobody loves working a nine-to-five. Um, but you know what? It didn't matter what it was, but it needed to go. And I loved everything that I did. And so I realized, like, man, I, I have everything that I want to do on my plate, right? Well, most of it. I have a lot of things that I like to do. Everything here I love, how could I possibly let let any of it go? And it's like sometimes God is going to ask you to let go of things you love because he has something better. Oh, let me cook, let me cook, let me cook. You know what I'm saying? Like, and 
we always hear that we always hear that in you know like motivational talks and this and that but it's like until you experience it you're not going to understand what i'm saying like did i want to let go of my exec position in a club where i was constantly getting better at creating graphics you know and being able to get into exclusive events no you know i was meeting influencers through that club did i want to let go of that no i did it but it's what I needed to do and it was what God was calling me to do in order to step into something else, right? Another example, classes, 18, there you go. Um, taking 18 credits is too much. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> I really don't. I mean, l listen, if I didn't have all of the dreams and aspirations that I do now, if I didn't want to become a multimillionaire and learn how to do crypto and stocks and trading, if I didn't want to become an influencer, no, excuse me, an influence, if I didn't want to do all of that in YouTube and really focus on my craft, then sure, I could take 18 credits. But you know what? I'm also a human being. I also have to get up, go to the gym. I also have to take care of my mental health. And so all of it eventually became too much. So I had to come to the decision like, I don't, I don't, I don't care. You know, I just have to drop something else. And so it came to dropping another class. And then would you look at it? If I came to just sit down and, you know, look at what I've done so far, there's a stress off my shoulders already. Just, just from doing two things, right? But ultimately, overall, just from doing one thing, and that's listening to God and sacrificing. And so one last big thing I kind of want to talk about is, you know, the decision that I had to come to, and I'm still actually in the process of deciding. And that is, you know, when I was talking about in the beginning of the video about dropping out of school. And like I said, I'm not trying to share too much of my personal business but I'm also going to be real with y'all and I have big dreams. Like I, I told y'all in the previous clip, like I, I want to do this. I want to do that. I have so many things that I want to do and I realized that I can't do them all at once, but I have to prepare myself step by step. And that's what God's been showing me. Right. And so I had to sit myself down and be like, what is it exactly right now that wants to be my main focus that I, I can put all my time and effort in succeeding in, right? And the answer was social media, YouTube, because I believe that I can have a strong presence online and in the real world, not just be some get ready with me, you know, or makeup artist or like, I'm not trying to put those type of people down. If that's what they love to do, that's their passion. They can make it cool. But that's not for me. And I know that's not what God's calling me to do. God's calling me to make an impact. Like, I want to be on Forbes, y'all, talking about God. I want to be on Times Magazine. I want to be on TED Talks. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, what am I willing to sacrifice? And what one thing am I willing to focus on now so that I can get there? So, you know, over my spring break, you know, I had a conversation with myself. And I was like, I need to pick that camera back up. Because... Obviously, you know, you guys haven't got the notification Tori posted or you guys haven't seen my videos in a while and it's because I I'm not gonna lie. I was going through a rough time and I didn't pick up the camera and because I'm human Sometimes that happens even with yes, I'm a small creator, but even with big creators that happens. It's not inevitable um, But just because I took a break did not mean that I gave up and that, I feel like that's a huge difference that people don't understand Oh, she fell off. She couldn't even say because this da da da. Nah, like this is me coming back in better. Like y'all don't understand. Like when someone has some a drive for something, when you have a drive for something, it will never go away. Versus when you know you're just doing something to do it because you need the money. You know da 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 da. It's like you could, you know what I'm saying. You could go off emotions one day and then quit. But. When you have a passion for something, it never goes away. It just eats at you. I remember, I, you know, I don't have a passion for dance, but I had always wished I stayed with competitive dancing because I love dance. I love to dance, but I'm not going to lie. I don't even got rhythm in me no more. Like, I really can't. Like, I can't even do a two-step. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? I still have that love for it, like that burning love for it. And I constantly think about it. It never goes away. But you know what? When I am successful and when I am wealthy and when I have, you know, the life that I've worked so hard for, 
I will be able to, you know, pick up the phone and say, hi, I was wondering about private dance lessons. You know what I'm saying? Because that's the luxury that you get when you work your ass off at getting something and you achieving your dreams. All those other little things, that your little side loves and passions, you could do. So, you know, flash forward to now, I told myself, Tori, pick up the camera. So, it's Wednesday and... I have the time. I created the time. Not wait, 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 wait. Like I said, let me slow down. I didn't have the time. I created the time. Because what I've learned in life is that if you don't create the time, it's never going to be there. And you're always going to have that constant excuse. I don't have time. I don't have this. I don't have that. You have to create that time. So I sat down. I created the time today. Monday night, I went through my whole entire schedule for the week and said, I'm doing this at this time. I'm doing this this day. And so today was my filming day and I decided to get back on to what I love and not sacrifice what I love for all these other things that could be cut out in expense to do what I love. And so, you know, to kind of come to a closing consensus of this video, when we're talking about when God says no, like I'm sharing with you guys everything that I have realized within my life when I decided to just relax and not be so OCD and so hypercritical and overanalyze things and just listen like it, it it's not only kind of a how should i say um embarkment of my own personal journey and a growth on my end but it's also growth within my relationship with god and realizing it was a major wow i need to trust you more and so i feel like for a lot of us especially as young adults college students it's so hard sometimes to get away from our fast, fast, busy, busy paced life. And at the end of the day, you have to think to yourself, like, you know, what is it that I truly want to accomplish in life? What is my main goal in life? If you have that main goal in life, all you need to do is give it to God because I promise you he has plans for you. Just the same way that I know that God has given me a, such a love and a burning desire for what I do, there's a reason why like I have that. There's a reason why you have that, right? And it'd be a shame if none of us had ever, like I said, for me, picked up the camera. If no one, if you have a dream to be an artist, if you never picked up a paintbrush. Um, like I said in another video, I don't want to get to heaven and have God say, this is what I had for you, you know? And that's not necessarily in a negative way, but it's just like, we have work to do. Like, we have work to do. I have work to do. And when God says no to something, oftentimes he's trying to show you and shed light onto another issue that you're disregarding. Because God wants you to fulfill what he has for you. It's in his plan. But like I said earlier, you have to let all of those distractions go. You have to free yourself from all of the things that are holding you back and focus on that one thing. You can have all the other things, you can focus on other things later. But like I was in a, a call the other day, a mentorship call, and they were saying, what are your goals in life? What do you want to accomplish? I said, I want to be a social media influencer. I want to learn how to trade. And she said, do you think you could do all of those at once? And I said, no. And she said, so why are you biting the bullet? Why are you trying to do all of those at once? And I said, I don't know. And it's because you can't. Like, of course I want to learn how to trade, but right now this is my focus. And once I have a steady relationship with you guys, with social media, with everything, then I will be able to put my attention and focus somewhere else. But for now, it's one thing on my mind and I'm gonna grind, grind, grind to get there. So to close this episode, I wanna thank everyone for tuning into this video today. I know I've been a little MIA, not even, a, I can't even like, you know, trick y'all. I've been MIA, but at the same time, I feel like through that experience of me going through the dirt, <laughs> the literal mud, um, I can come back on here and just be more genuine with you guys. I'm not even going like talking to the camera for some reason, even though I haven't picked it up in over a month, felt so much easier. And I think it just comes with experience, experiences of life. And I'm, I'm not talking to a camera. I'm talking to an audience. I'm talking to someone who might need to hear this. I'm talking to myself too. Um, so I want to thank you guys for coming on today and I will see you guys next Monday. Mm -hmm.